Cheeseheads. Cheeseheads. Get on your feet. It's Curd and Law. Hosted by Sparky Fighter and Ryan Horvath. Welcome in another edition of Curd and Law. He is back. The long awaited return. <sighs> he is Ryan Horvath of Bet MGM tonight. Weeknights, Trista Crick uh, and Nick Ashu on your BetQL radio network. Uh, and again, you want to check him out uh, weeknights there, watching the game, listening to these guys. Very entertaining. Tell you how you bet some uh, money in the games or maybe looking ahead to the late games. I'll hook you up there too. Follow my Twitter, Ryan Horvath. You can follow me at Sparky Radio. If you go to 1250amthefan.com and check out all my weekly interviews that I have done, including the latest one from, uh, let's see, what it was, Tuesday uh, with Ryan Wood of the Green Bay Press Gazette talking Packers, Chiefs. I'm uh, looking ahead to Jordan Love's contract of uh, this offseason. So, again, go check that one out. Uh, and then also on Wednesday, or I should say uh, later Wednesday afternoon, early Thursday morning, you'll be able to see the one I do with uh, Tim Muma from Brewer Fanatic, looking at the Brewers offseason, the Jackson Cheerio signing, Corbin Burns possibly getting traded, Willie Adamas, all kinds of fun stuff there that'll be posted uh, Wednesday afternoon. All right, Ryan Horvath, uh, as we stream live here on the Odyssey Sports YouTube page, uh, we have not talked to you since the Packers' big win over the Kansas City Chiefs at Lambeau, extending their winning streak to three games, getting them back to six and six, 500, baby, for this Jordan Love uh, young Packer team at this point. Thoughts on what you saw? Yeah, what a win. Bet the Packers, took a little money line, felt good about them. I mean, they've been playing pretty good football, right? And yep. uh, held the Chiefs out of the end zone when they got into the red zone a couple times. Jordan Love. Fantastic. Completed 10 of his first 11 pass attempts, I believe, for 109 yards. Had two touchdowns on their first two drives. And, I mean, hell, like, that's what you want to see. And it's like this team's growing up in front of the in front of our eyes, and now they're able to build leads, and that's really important. Jordan Love was great. I mean, 25 of 36, 267 yards, three touchdowns. Again, no interceptions. Plays another clean game. Looks like he's in control of the offense. Matt LaFleur's offense. Looks great. This is what we wanted to see. This is what we saw the first couple weeks of the season. Then they went away from it. How about the way A.J. Dillon's running the ball right now, hurting defenders? You never want to see anybody get injured, but this is the A.J. Dillon that we were promised a couple seasons ago, especially in these cold weather games at Lambeau. You know, we want Aaron Jones back. Uh, We'll see what Kenyon Drake has left in the tank, but with A.J. Dillon, you know, with opposing defenses, I should say, when they're going against A.J. Dillon, it sucks when you have to tackle a guy like that 20 to 22 times per game. But going back to Jordan Love, man, um, three touchdowns, no picks. Again, he looks like he's in control of the offense. Gone is the stuff that I saw at Utah State. Because at Utah State, you know, when I first started watching Jordan Love, I fell in love with him. And then, like, the reason I didn't love Jordan Love as much as everybody else, and I'll admit it, you know, and it looks like I was wrong and good because um, now the Packers may have found their quarterback for the next 10 years. Um, you know, still people are like, oh, did you still want T. Higgins and, and Patrick Queen? Probably, though, man. Hell, I'll take both of those guys. They're both going to be free agents. I'll bring them over to Green Bay. But, yeah, I mean, because those teams were really good. They were NFC championship teams that were maybe a couple pieces away from beating a team like San Francisco or Tampa Bay. But sticking with this season, I mean, then that last year at Utah State – Like Jordan Love reminded me a little bit of Jameis, and that's what scared me. You know, like where the underneath stuff would be available, but he would be like, screw it, I'm going to take the shot down the field. It is what it is. He's a young quarterback, but that's gone, man. He looks really comfortable. He had an 82% adjusted completion rate, 8.6 yards per attempt on straight uh, dropbacks, four big-time throws, zero turnover-worthy plays, zero turnover-worthy plays again. And, um, man, how about that fourth down deep shot to Romeo Dobbs? I'm yelling, no, 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 it's fourth and one, run the ball. Yep. Man, what a beautiful throw. And then, so, really quick, the defensive side of the ball, man, that zone defense, that soft zone defense that we make fun of every week from Joe Barry really had Patrick Mahomes confused. I mean, problem for Mahomes, Mahomes is still great. Kelsey's getting a little bit older. You know, he's, he's still going to be serviceable, and he's still going to put up numbers because of, the familiarity with Mahomes, they're so comfortable with each other. Mahomes always knows where he's at on the field, and teams, for whatever reason, just give them the middle of the field. But, like, they don't have any weapons, man. MVS is is no good. Sky Moore's not that guy. You know, you know what I mean? Like, Rice is okay, but he's a rookie. But I'm not going to take away anything from the Packers' defense. They balled out. I would give the game ball to Darnell Savage. 
Uh, did a little bit of everything for the Packers. He was targeted twice in coverage, gave up just one catch for seven yards, made the tackle short of the first down marker. That was a really nice open field tackle. Had two defensive stops, one forced incompletion. And then Keyshawn Nixon obviously makes the big play with the big interception late in the fourth quarter. But uh, he was pretty good all night, man. And then really quick, going back to the offensive side of the ball, game ball outside of Jordan Love. How about uh, Wicks? Three of four targets. He catches 43 yards, two first downs. That's the important thing. Those were big catches. They were both first downs. And uh, one of those receptions went for 15 plus yards. And he averaged over 2.69 yards per route run. Nerd stat, but like he's getting open. He's picking up first downs. And he's a young player. He's only going to continue to get better. And uh, Christian Watson was balling out. That hamstring injury really sucks because we want to keep him healthy. But I'm jacked. I'm excited. Like, I don't think this team's good enough to win a Super Bowl, but I think they're good enough to make the playoffs all of a sudden. And they're a team, man. Like, if you're San Francisco, you're Philadelphia, people may laugh. I don't want to avoid. The NFC is a dumpster fire. We talk about it every week on this podcast. I'd much rather play Desmond Ritter in Atlanta right now than this Packers offense with that pass rush, with Rashawn Gary. And you know what, man? Jair, call me a hater or whatever. I wish they, I almost wish they would have moved him. I love the effort I'm seeing from these young guys on the defensive side of the ball. They're playing better since he's been out. If he wants to come back and contribute, if David Bakhtiari next year wants to come back and contribute, that's cool. But uh, I owe Jordan Love an, a, a big apology because like he's playing within the offense. I always thought like that Favre in him would always like, I don't know, man. Like also, he's got a lot of Aaron Rodgers in him. He really does. I love how they like show the little clips, but it's not only that. Uh, he's got like a little Rodgers, a little Favre. He's got a little Mahomes in him. The way he climbed the pocket the other night, we just want him to continue to do it. I thought Rodgers on McAfee said it best. He's playing great, but let's not crown him yet. And also, and I got to be better about this, let's not crucify him when he sucks. Because that wasn't about Jordan Love. That was about Zach Wilson. He used Jordan Love's name. Yes, that's what he said. I heard the I heard the quote and I tweeted it out. That was pretty much going back to Zach Wilson because he's all pissed off by how Zach Wilson has been handled there. And his point in all of this is true, which is, you know, Wilson gets drafted, you know, right there at the top of the draft. And then you crucify the poor kid. And now mentally he's all jacked up now because y'all put these huge expectations on him where he was drafted. And then he doesn't live up to it. And then he gets crushed later. And look, I I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the way the Packers do it, is going to be the way all these other NFL teams are going to do it, right? So I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, you know what? The Bears at one, they're going to take Caleb Williams, but they're going to keep Justin Fields for a year or two uh, and let Caleb Williams learn behind Justin Fields for a year or two. And then they're going to play, you know, Caleb Williams and Trey Justin Fields. Like, that's not going to happen. Whoever drafts May is not, probably not going to let him sit there for a year or two and learn. But realistically, Horvat, I think that might be a better play then obviously playing him. I'm not saying sit the guy for three years like Rodgers and Jordan loved it. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is to sit a guy for a year, year and a half, whatever, and let them learn and let them be in the film room and let them go all through all of that might actually put them in a better position to succeed versus going out there, possibly stinking up the place and then being pushed aside. Uh, his point, uh, Rodgers point all that, that he used was Geno Smith. Think about how Geno Smith comes in the league, don't play all that well. And then everybody's like, okay, you're not a starter in this league. You're just going to be a backup. Uh, and then off to backup status, he goes and then rebounds and comes out of nowhere and has a huge year for the Seahawks last year. So it obviously happens. Um, but I, I think that whole Jordan Love thing, sure, he was talking about Jordan. But to, in, my, in my opinion, I think that was as much to do with Zach Wilson as it had to do with Jordan Love. Right, right. But anyway, uh, great win over the Chiefs. Team now in playoff contention. Team could be a scary wild card team. Just got to continue to handle business, though. Can't have a lots letdown of, against the six seed. Can't have a letdown. I mean, I just want to get in the dance, man. No, no, I, no, no. I, I look. I'm with you. I want to get in too. But that six seed is the Lions. That's a lot different of a ball game than San Francisco or Philly. So, and and they just lost their best run defensive lineman, uh, McNeil. The Lions just did. So that that's a big loss for the Lions. For me, I look at this and go. Okay, you get in fine, you lose, whatever. It's still a great season if you get bounced in the first round. But they legitimately have a chance at six. They have the same record as the Vikings, Ryan. Vikings got the Lions two more times. Packers got a much easier schedule the rest of the way out. Plus, they play the Vikings. Realistically, at the end, that last game against the Vikings might end up determining who the sixth seed is and who the seventh seed is. Yeah. 
man. I feel so, well, I feel so much better. Like I wanted to jump off my, uh, out of the building, like week five, this team looks so bad. And, yep. and that's the other thing. Like, you, you know, who else looks like he could be a baller is Van S a little bit, man. Um, ah, the other guy you've been on, he's coming around little by little. Like, just like okay, Gary. I was never like Van Ness is, is, is the next, uh, um, I don't know. I, I didn't think he was going to be terrible or right? like Dean Lowry. I mean, Dean Lowry wasn't terrible. Also. No, Dean Lowry solid. was actually a pretty good football player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't like worthy of a first round pick and he wasn't a first round pick. But I just didn't want another guy like that. Another guy that was going to take three, four years. But no, nah, I, I think he might be like ready to be a, like a baller next year. And then you have him opposite Rashawn Gary. Like I see all these guys, man. And, and we're going to talk about Jordan Love. So actually, I'll just hold that comment off. But all right, well, that's coming I feel, up I, I, I feel much better about this team. I love I love the young guys. Uh, love Jaden Reed. I like Wicks a lot. I want, Watson, I want Watson to stay healthy. Um, you know, still, though, next year, I would love if they were going to – I would love a T. Higgins, though. I would love to get Jordan Love. Like, dude, th- like, if I'm going to say the same stuff for Rodgers, I got to say the same stuff for, for Jordan Love. Yes. Right now, Jordan Love's playing good football, and these guys are playing above expectation. But at the end of the day, like we've done this before, where MVS had a game or St. Brown had a game, we were like, see, Rodgers doesn't need uh, Hopkins. Then NSC Championship rolls around, and EQ's dropping balls in the back of the end zone to tie the game on two-point conversions. Rodgers, that's why Rodgers forces the ball to Devontae three times on that final drive. He's like, screw you, screw you. That's what happened. You know what I mean? Like, who did you want him to trust? I would have thrown the ball to Robert Tunyon. I go back and I watch that game like once a week. I would have at least trusted Tunyon in the back of the end zone, but I digress. But I would love to see like next year, especially if this is a playoff team, like more pass rushers. I definitely don't want to spend money. Savage may have earned himself a spot on this team again. I don't even remember. Is this his last year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Owens may have earned himself a spot on this team the way he's been playing when Savage was out. I mean, again, I think about this. Up. Right, you said it earlier about oh, Jair Alexander is out, and look at how well they're playing. Seriously, they have a hodgepodge of safeties, all kinds of different dudes. They have a hodgepodge at cornerback, and they're playing really well. And I mentioned the Ryan Wood interview up at twelve fifty a.m. the fan.com, and I brought this up to him. You know what he said? It's a difference maker when there's actually communication and guys are in the right spots. And to me. You know, that, I'm not going to say it's all on Savage, but that speaks a lot to Adrian Amos here in the past and so forth as far as guys being in the position they're supposed to be in and making the right plays. When they give up big plays, it's usually because somebody was in the wrong spot or didn't do what they're supposed to do, and that's what ends up happening. And then we turn and we yell at Joe Barry for being a complete idiot, but at the end of the day, these guys may just not be in the right spots to begin with and the communication may be lacking. So having a veteran like Owens, who was a starter with, you know, the Texans, maybe that kind of helps solidify the secondary a little bit back there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just crazy that the defense is playing the way that they're playing. And I don't like, still, I don't trust the defense. And don't get me, don't get me wrong. Like I'm, with this you. Is, I'm not, just, you know what I mean? Like yep. I'll give the floor his flowers. We're going to get to him too. Goot, I'll give Goot some flowers and Jordan Love could have the whole bouquet. I'm not ready to go there with Joe Barry and those slackers on the defensive side of the ball, but I like these guys that are like, that are like going out there and trying, man. And imagine what this defense looks like if if your two first round freaking picks at corner are playing right now in Stokes and Jair. Right. So that's what I'm saying. If they're going to spend some money, I would love to see like, yeah, like so to answer everybody's question, yes, I would still want T Higgins on this team because hell yeah, I'd pay T Higgins. I love T Higgins as a red zone threat. Him and Christian yep. Watson and Dobbs and Wicks and. Man, like, Reed. yep. You can never like give them. I mean, who knows? And then it'll be the Sports Illustrated cover, and it'll be Jordan Love <laughs> holding the ball and all of his receivers surrounding them. But I, I would, I would bet know. if we're going to talk about spending money, and I don't even know what their cap situation is going to look like. Bakhtiari is not playing for a forty million dollar cap hit, so that's not happening. So he's going to have to restructure his deal, or they're going to have to come up with something. Bakhtiari said that. on Twitter yesterday, two days ago, that the plan is he's plans on playing in Green Bay in twenty twenty four. He said that's the plan to be back in twenty four. Let me let me tell you why he won't, right? Okay. What did Goot do, even though Aaron Rodgers had what? How many years left on that deal? Two, and I think. And he drafted Jordan Love in the first round, even though guys like me hated it, right? Uh, he did that because what what did Ted do when he still had Favre? Because he they both thought their their but, quarterback was getting to the end. But here's what I'm saying. 
So what would Ted do when an offensive lineman would hit 28, yep. 29 years old, come off an injury, or be playing great football but only have a year or two left on his deal? Like Agreed. They would say goodbye. So if they could move back the Ari, I think they would still look to do so, especially the way that they're playing right now. I would love them back in a perfect world. But like Goot is ruthless, and I hate it and love it about him. And I don't trust ba- – like, dude, Bakhtiari, even when he's out there, sure, he pl- he's still a, like a dominant – pass protector, but he never completes a full four quarters. I don't trust right. that. It's way too much money that you could spend with this young team who is, we didn't know what the hell they were. Like, they're not going to call this a rebuild, but that's what this was. It was a rebuild, a retool, regroup on the fly. And now they're playing pretty good football and they might not be far off. So I don't know that I want to bring back the 30 year old left tackle with one think about this. The rebuild went for like five weeks. <laughs> that was the rebuild. And this team adds that's up in the play. That's why I like being a Packer fan. And I bitch and I complain and whatever. Like they're the one, they're the one team I still care about. You know, so like, crazy. I got excited that the Cubs were going to get Otani. They're not. They're no, not going to end no. with anybody. The only free agent I've ever gotten in my life was Alfonso Soriano. You know, the Bull, <laughs> the Bulls. Um, I mean, I like the Bucks more than I like my own basketball team now. Notre Dame. They're playing in the Pop Tart Bowl, so the Packers all out. I can't have get this another- team Chicago Bears rebuild. I can't be the Lions waiting twenty five years to win the yep. comp. Anyway, yeah. All right, he's Ryan Horvath. Follow him at uh, Ryan Horvath. Follow me at Sparky Radio. Take a quick time out. Come back and perceptions, perceptions. That's what we're going to talk about. The, the the majority of the rest of this podcast. How's perceptions changed on Love Lafleur Barry Gutenkunst? We're going to talk about all of that coming up next here on Curtin Long. Download it on your Odyssey app, wherever you download your favorite podcast. Tell a friend, tell a family member. Hey, it's Steve Sparky Pfeiffer, 1250 AM, The Fan, along with our guy, Ryan Horvat. Uh, of course, check him out, Bet MGM tonight, weeknights uh, on the BetQL radio network. Uh, if you have one close to your house, or in earshot, you can listen that way or just stream it on your Odyssey app. That works too. You can download this fine podcast, Kurt and Long there as well. And uh, check us out on YouTube. Like, subscribe, notifications, all that fun stuff they always tell you to do. Do that as well on the Odyssey Sports YouTube page. Ryan Horvath, perceptions, perceptions, perceptions. How has your perception of Jordan Love changed? How has your perception of Jordan Love changed? Uh, since maybe where it was to where it was, you got into it a little bit there uh, in, yeah. in in the first segment. Yeah, I'll admit I was probably, it looks like I may, I may have been wrong initially on Jordan Love where, again, though, I think I've been pretty fair with Jordan Love all season long, like coming into the season, but let's be honest. You never really crushed him. You blamed everybody around him more than you actually blamed him. Well, like, let's just call it what it is. I'm an Aaron Rodgers guy. Aaron Rodgers right. remains my favorite professional at, He's top five. He's not my favorite all time, but he's one of my, he's like my last favorite pro athlete of all time because he's still older than me. You know what I mean? Like Brady's gone. Peyton's gone. We feel different about Peyton. You know, Marino's long gone. The guys I grew up loving are gone, but like, here's the thing. I am a loyal guy to all of my quarterbacks. Before Aaron was my main squeeze, I was a Brett guy. I fell in love with football because of Brett Favre, like most people. I wanted to trade Aaron Rodgers for Randy Moss. I bitched and complained even in the fourth and fifth grade that they never got far of any help, Um, you know, except for Reggie White, of course, on the defensive side of the ball. And like, you know, guys that far guys that you didn't expect to like take off uh, like rising and whatnot, but you never got a Randy Moss or a Tony Gonzalez. So I, I was always loyal to Favre. I wasn't really ready for Rodgers. I eventually moved on, fell in love with Rodgers and in 10 years, 15 years, I'll be in love with Jordan Love and I'll be pissed when he gets traded to the Jets. And I won't like the next guy, Drake May Jr. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be hard on that. But I was a little bit hard on Jordan Love. And, uh, but I always said Jordan Love seems like a good kid. I just kind of wanted to see what he could do right away. I didn't think it was fair that he had to sit behind that quack Rodgers for a couple years. And he's balling out right now. He looks good. There's some bad, there's some good. In the last month, it's been mostly good especially against the Chiefs, a 90.6 passing grade. That's the highest grade among quarterbacks, all quarterbacks, week 13. That was the highest single-game mark of his entire career. Like we said, completed 25 of 36 passes, 267 yards, three touchdowns, 77% accuracy rate. That was third, week 13, out of all quarterbacks. Right now, he's playing like a top-10 quarterback, and it helps that 
Like every other quarterback in the league sucks or they're hurt. So right now, Jordan loves the top 10 quarterback in this league. So that's how my perception has changed. And I love to see him playing within the offense. You know, Favre, 0% chance, especially his first year as a starter, would be playing um, within the LaFleur offense. He would be, he would not have learned his lesson by now. Jordan Love has. And where I give him the most credit is he was really bad for a couple weeks. I torched him. Everybody torched him. People in the fan base torched him. Guys like uh, Adam Shrine torched him. Everybody oh, he torched just came him. Out, he just came out and apologized and, and, and said, oh, I was wrong. Jordan loves my guy. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. That's, that's my shine. But everybody torched him, and he just brushed it off. And he went out there the last three games, and he's balled out. And that's tough to do because, like, these kids nowadays, man, it's like not our NFL anymore. Zach Wilson refusing to go play quarterback for the Jets, right? Last year, Marcus Mariota got benched. He just quit. Jordan went home. Love yep. Balled out. He worked harder. And so I got to give him his flowers and uh, say I'm sorry to Jordan Love. Say – I. I'm not going to fully apologize to LaFleur because I was never a fire. Well, we'll get to La, we'll, we'll get to LaFleur next. Just settle down. We'll get to LaFleur oh, next. So my perception on Jordan Love has changed. Um, I'm happy that he's the Packers starting quarterback. I think he's earned the extension. I'm fine without Drake May or Caleb Williams. I'd rather have Jordan Love because I see that he could play the position. And uh, yeah, he's he's good, man. He's he's Jordan Love is playing really good football right now. I don't want to jinx it. But uh, okay. yeah, I apologize. And, and unlike Adam Shine, like I don't need to, I don't want to gaslight, you know, here. Uh, That's you know, what he does. I, I was wrong, dude, but I, I'm a Rodgers guy. And I didn't want to draft a backup quarterback to sit behind Rodgers for three years when this team was winning 13 games. I did want a T Higgins. I still would take a Patrick Queen. He's balling out this year. It's a contract year. Uh, and I'll still be like this. Like, I don't want to in five years draft Jordan Love's backup. You know, I want to like keep making the team better. Because the difference is, if this team, really quick on that, okay, I would have been fine with the Jordan Love backup pick in the first round that year if this was the type of team that when they're in the mix, we actually got OBJ, you know, or we got that pass rusher or Buda Baker. We never get that kind of stuff, though. So I'm like, no, we got to get these guys that I like now or we're never going to get them because we don't get the free agents. You know, what What crack, what was Rodgers smoking when he was like, guys want to come here and play with me? No, they don't, dude. Nobody's going to New York. You know who's going to play with you in New York? Guys that aren't getting deals anywhere else. Cobb, Lazard, Amos, Cook, those bums. Yeah, Turner, Billy Turner, Josh Turner, whatever his name is. They all suck. But anyway, uh, Jordan Love, I was wrong. I apologize. You could clip that. Everybody. And here's the other thing. When the Packers win, could everybody leave me alone? I'm a Jordan Love guy now. What do I need to do? All right. I'll be I, honest. I, I, what's Jordan Love's charity? I will give $500 <laughs> for Christmas to Jordan Love's charity. Hey. I will buy the green jersey, the white jersey. I'll buy those ugly ass jerseys I hate. Every single throwback, bobbleheads. He's my quarterback now. Whatever I need to do, <laughs> Jordan Love bookmark, Tim and Tosa, whoever else. I get it. He's good. I still love, and I still love Rodgers. All right. And Rodgers. Is, is good to Jordan Love. So everybody leave me alone with, with the crap. All right, all right? I'll be honest. I've done it the last three weeks. Every time they play well, I always search your your Twitter account out because I want to go see what Brian Horvath has to say as the team is playing well. I'm as guilty as everybody else. I was like, all right, let's see what Horvath's got to say now as, as they win now uh, two in a row. Oh, look, they're going to beat the Chiefs. What did Horvath say tonight? I don't do it during the game. I always go look after the game is done and kind of go through your tweets and see what you said because you never know. It could be good topics for Kurt and Law too. So I always go check it out for that. But I'm as guilty as anybody is doing that. I've I don't tweet it. In the you know. last three weeks, I bet them against the Chiefs on the money line. I think they're good. Yeah, I think, I think I think I was wrong, but I think it was like fair that I was wrong. I mean, the game against the Raiders and the Bronx, Jordan Love literally at one point just threw the ball to another defense. Yeah, even he had one throw, and it actually ended up working out. Even this past week, there are still some maybe even sure. that fourth and one. You know what I mean? Like yep. he's got some Farve in him, and he's he got some Rodgers in him, but he's definitely got some Farve in him. He's got he's just Jordan Love, and, Dude, uh, and that that arm is something. I mean, you say whatever you want about everything else concerning that dude, but he can make some throws for some positions and some angles and 
kind of up in the air, falling backwards and sideways and everything else and throwing balls on target. That's the type of stuff. That not, not every quarterback in the league can do some of the stuff that he's shown he can do. I'm I'm coming up. I had COVID for like eight days. I have COVID brain. Who was it? Patrick Taylor that was actually that wouldn't get out of bounds though. Yes. All right, well, Jordan Love like kind of yelled at him, but then he like patted him on the back. No, no, no. Go full Rodgers on him though. Because he's not. Say what you want though. Say what you want. Okay, like he does it once. Okay, do what you did. Does it the second time. You know how he never he never does that again. You know how he never forgets. You ream him out. You know James Jones never ran the wrong route ever again. The next year he caught thirteen right. touchdowns because on Monday Night Football against the Bears, Rodgers reamed him out. Favre would do it too. Brady would do it too. Um, you know, but like that's the thing about him about Jordan Love too is he's not only playing good football. Like I love this kid. Seems like a really good dude too. No doubt. I, I think for me, my thing coming in was okay. Jordan Love's a humble dude. Jordan Love's quiet. What's Jordan Love going to do when things go south? When they're really bad and struggling, like, is he going to turn into 12 and start snapping and yelling and screaming at everybody and lose his patience as people are coming at him because they're going to blame him if things don't go well? And he never did. They were going bad. Guys were running the wrong routes, dropping balls, everything else. And he sat there and he just kept going, kept plugging away, kept being positive. And now they started this thing. The wide receivers in him on Tuesdays, on their off days, they're watching film together of the upcoming defenses. They've been doing it for what? The last three weeks, I think. Uh, and they've won every game since they started doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, now you've got Love and these young players working on their Tuesday, their off day. They work every Tuesday together and the film room going over different stuff. So they're on the same page. That's just, that's even better. I, uh, the character part of it is, is what I'm even more impressed with than anything else. Talent wise, I, I was pretty sold that he was good enough to, to do what he's doing. I just wasn't as convinced about character because i didn't know we didn't know how you would act in in that type of situation uh, all right let, let's move on take another quick time out i want to talk uh, about the next guy matt laflower as ryan horvat likes to call him that that's his perception that. changed of laflower we'll talk yeah. about that next here i curtain law Welcome back, Kurt and Long, Steve Sparky, Fiber, 1250 AM. The fan, Ryan Horvat. Uh, he, of course, part of BetMGM tonight, part of the BetQL Radio Network. Follow him on Twitter, Ryan Horvat. You can follow me at Sparky Radio. Uh, you can, of course, check these out on the Odyssey Sports YouTube page uh, as well. Uh, and you can also download it on your Odyssey app uh, or uh, anywhere you download your favorite podcast app. How has your perception of Matt LaFleur, a.k.a. LaFlower, per Horvat? changed uh, here as the Packers have fought their way back to six and six. And as Horvath noted back in the first segment of the show, this offense looks uh, probably a lot more like what everybody thought the Matt LaFleur offense should look like. Horvath, I can't wait to hear this. Go ahead. I wouldn't say that my perception on LaFleur has changed because I was never a LaFleur hater. And you called him LaFleur. How is that not a hater? Yeah, I mean, you look like you every time this team takes a loss, he looks like he's going to cry. And uh, <laughs> no, but I've I've always I, I like LaFleur. But, I mean, it looked like you know how I was, I was saying like early on this season. I wonder if David Bakhtiar even wants to play on this team. Like there yeah. were times like against Denver and against the Raiders where I was questioning if Matt LaFleur really wanted to coach this young team. Or if he was like, shoot, I really miss Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm sure that crossed like, his mind. Because, yeah, I was like hard on the floor for a couple of weeks, and we should have been hard on him, though, man, because I was sticking up for Jordan Love at the time because yep. I thought he was being set up for failure, not only by the drops and, you know, the terrible offensive line play at the time, but by the play calling. The play calling was lazy as hell. The first two weeks, especially the game against Chicago, I loved it. And it's not trick plays, man. I don't need the trick plays because this team cannot, um, execute trick plays i don't want to see him anymore to be horrible honest. at it like and like you know you want to go jet sweep to Jaden reed sure i don't need any like throwbacks to jordan love or anything like that it was you know like look what the Bengals tried with boyd the other night we don't need any of that stuff but you know um it's not even about like pre-snap motion i wanted to see like a little bit more play action um you know more quick easy throws for jordan love to kind of open things up run the ball run the ball when you're supposed to run the ball and use Aaron Jones. Now Aaron Jones is hurt. I like the way they're using AJ Dillon. Um, in fourth and one though, I never want to see Jordan Love in shotgun. If you have AJ Dillon on that field, just line them up under center, 
give it to A.J. Dillon. Problem is he gets stuffed a lot, and a lot of that has to do with this offensive line just not creating a whole bunch of space, you know, not getting a whole bunch of push up front. They're getting a little bit better, but, you know, it's just A.J. Dillon trying to fight off like two, three defenders. Sometimes he's able to do that. Sometimes he's not. The other night he was able to do that. But, yeah, man, like it looks like LaFleur went back into the lab, read the press clippings where everybody was calling him out, and, like, you know, spent hours in the office. He hasn't been sleeping and put together a couple good game plans. LaFleur's always really good at the, the scripted stuff, though. You know, the first two drives of the game, usually pretty good. And then the first drive out of the second half, the first couple. His issue is usually in the third or like late in the fourth quarter um, in those big games. You know, he gets out coached. Not always great at making the right adjustments or making the right calls on the fly. Um, but you know what helps? Not having to do that nonsense is building leads early on in games, which against Kansas City, you know, when you score on your first two drives, that helps. You don't want to be playing from behind with a young team. So he's been really good, but my perception hasn't really changed. We're just getting the good LaFleur, not whatever the hell that was weeks wow. three through six, weeks three through seven, you know? And look how great Jordan Love's playing because of it. Look how much better A.J. Dillon's playing. Look at these young wide receivers. The defense is all on Joe Barry, but the offense has been much better. We talk, about La- we talk about LaFleur, and you go back to that stretch where they were awful and they couldn't score in first halves. You couldn't score at all. They couldn't move the ball. It was one, two, three, punt, one, two, three, punt. And then they come out of halftime, and then the offense opens up in the third quarter every one of those games, and they make things interesting more times than not. More in closing, but they made things interesting. And LaFleur, I think it was uh, after the Chiefs game this week, they asked him, they're like, I forgot who brought it up. Somebody said, hey, well, why, why all of a sudden are you going into your bag more with these play calls maybe than you did earlier in the year, right? And LaFleur pretty much said that – I think it. I think he said it was the Steelers game, which they lost. But he saw everything start to change on offense. He saw them start to click a little bit um, and start to figure things out. And pretty much from that moment on, he said, "Okay, I'm going to open this up, and we're going to we're going to kind of open this offense up a little bit more and go to you know how I want to run it." Yeah. Fact of the matter is, he didn't trust them. And that's why it was so vanilla and so plain because guys were running the wrong routes. They couldn't protect. Uh, they couldn't protect Love. AJ Dillon sucked for the most part. Uh, they couldn't run block. Jones couldn't stay healthy. I mean, there was a lot going on. So he just said, "Screw it. I'm just. I'm going to call this as plain Jane as possible until everybody figures out what the hell they're supposed to be doing. And then when we get to that point, I'll open it up. And that's why I kept saying, like, I'm not evaluating Love until we get a better idea of everybody's doing their job and it's Love's fault." And my goal was just by the end of the year, the last couple of weeks, show me that this offense, what it could look like next year, way ahead of what I thought. Like, there's no way I would have had them beating the Lions and Chiefs. I said before that Lions game or before the Chargers game, I said, I'm not picking them to win another game the rest of the year. I'm just not. They beat the Chargers. We come on curtain long. And you're feeling good about the Lions game. I'm like, nope, I'm not touching them. I don't, yeah. nope, nope, nope. And then Kansas City, and you were out sick. And again, I was like, no, not picking them. No, not happening it. And I said, going in that podcast, I said, I think the Packers can score 17 to 24 points. I go, my problem is I don't think Joe Barry's defense can keep Mahomes under 30. So they probably lose the game at the end of the day. I did not expect two weeks in a row, Chiefs and Lions, for them to be able to create turnovers. That was the biggest problem all year. They haven't been able to create turnovers. They get fumbles against the Lions. They get a big interception by Nixon here against the Lions. Well, Fleur said at halftime, he pretty much said, whoever turns it over is going to lose, right? So whoever gets the turnover, you know, gets the interception and the fumble recovery is probably going to win this game. That's how it played out. LaFleur is another one. We talk about character that I wanted to see how this was going to go. First time you've ever been in a situation with a young team struggling, everybody all over you, how are you going to react? And he was emotional. No question. There was one game where he was pissed off and all fiery uh, going into halftime like he was about ready to cry about how bad they were and whether or not they wanted to be out there and this whole thing. You, you've you seen a lot of that uh, emotion from LaFleur that you didn't see as much with Rodgers, at least not publicly. Maybe it was privately, but not publicly. So you saw some of that. And the other thing you're seeing, these dudes get down with LaFleur, man. It feels like they buy into what LaFleur is saying. Did you see the Rashawn Gary one uh, against the the Lions where he gives him a big hug, gives him the game ball, and Gary gets all choked up? You can just tell, you can feel like they're kind of all in this together with love, with LaFleur, 
everybody's pulling in the same direction. That that's a good, good sign going forward. All right, we're not going to have time to get to Joe Barry and Brian Goodenkun. So, well, well I got bad news for you anyway on those. No two. spoiler. We're think- going to do it. We're going to do it on Friday. Just stop. Okay. So okay. Barry and Goodenkun. So we're going to get to those two on Friday, and on Friday we'll look ahead to the Giants game Monday night. There's no sense to do a podcast on Monday when the game is Monday night. So we'll do the podcast Friday, and then we'll do another podcast either after the game Monday night. No, probably not because Ryan works. Uh, So probably Tuesday, I will do a podcast, post-podcast of Packers, Giants instead of on Monday. So Friday, we'll look ahead. Uh, We'll get our predictions in there for Monday's game, and we'll do the last two perceptions of Joel Berry and Brian Goodenkunst. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and tuning in another edition of Curd and Long. Download it on your Odyssey app, review, download your favorite podcast, and of course, like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications on the YouTube Odyssey Sports page as well, so you know when we are broadcasting live. Have a good one. Toodles.